I would like to thank the Sonoran Desert Institute for sponsoring this video. Thanks, guys. SDI is accredited and offers online education to those who would like to earn an advanced gunsmithing certificate or those who want to enroll in their Associate of Science and Firearms Technology degree program. Whew, mouthful. Anyway, check them out, sdi.edu. All right, hey folks, welcome back. About a year ago, I got my very first Palmetto State rifle. It was this one, and I took it out on the range. Uh, I liked a lot about it, and I didn't like one thing about it. And so I wanted to give a little bit of an update and talk about Palmetto State in general. Uh, so the reliability was just great, as I would expect. Fantastic. Way to go. Uh, the bullets shot straight. I was able to zero it, and it held a pretty darn decent group. I didn't like this rifle initially. Uh, because it had a weird recoil impulse. What that meant is the bolt carrier group went into the buffer tube. It was a little bit sluggish getting back, which really affected the timing of the rifle. And for me, it was like a deal breaker immediately. It completely screwed up the rhythm of my normal shooting recoil management. So right out of the gate where I could just crush with any of my other guns and many of your guns. This one was just a weird timing thing, so I didn't like it for that. It ended up being just a real easy issue. A lot of you guys in the comments, you'll be like, I knew it. Uh, and you were right, it was really just a matter of switching out the uh, buffer and the buffer spring. And once I did that, it sat down and ran like it was supposed to. And so since then, I've been carrying this gun uh, and shooting it a good bit. So, uh, and I just wanted to say, hey, the rifle that uh, I really just didn't like because of that one issue, I've corrected that issue and it's good to go. Since that time, I've purchased a good bit of other Palmetto States. It's an undetermined number of them. Many of them were lost tragically in a boating accident. So pray for me. I also picked up some other uh, other guns. These are Radical firearms. And so uh, they sent me these for free. So thanks, Radical. Uh, they're shooting just fine. But what I'm interested in is I'm just reading the terrain and preparing for the worst. Who knows how long we'll be able to purchase stuff like this. So while I've got my nice stuff that I really like, just smooth as glass guns that are very, very tough, kind of the more mid to higher end rifles, I love those. I can't afford to stockpile that stuff. And I don't know, when the music stops, uh, it, it's just kind of you're left with whatever you had. And so what happens if some legislation comes through and I can't get my favorite toys anymore? I want to stockpile for a rainy day, which means, man, I can buy a whole bunch of these. And so that's really good. So I buy them and I shoot them and I'm like, all right, they're good to go. And then I put them in a closet and they're safe and, and then I don't touch them <laughs> Uh, for quite a while, but all my Palmetto States and the Radicals, they're shooting just fine. Now, granted, I'm not torturing them to death. The point is, is to, for me, it's stockpile stuff. So uh, anyway, uh, I just wanted to give you kind of a little bit of a green light. Uh, proceed with caution with Palmetto State and Radical or whatever else you want to uh, get it. If your goal is stockpiling stuff, which again, not saying that I have done that because of the boating accident, uh, but uh, <laughs> uh, anyway, another thing, man, if, if you have somebody who's really proud of Palmetto State, don't say anything negative. They'll never forgive you for it. When I first said, made that video about Palmetto State, it wasn't as much a review on the gun. It was just, hey, here's my first thoughts on a Palmetto, and everyone just kind of freaked out at me because I didn't instantly love it. It was like kicking a bee's nest, and they just swarmed all over me. I'm like, dude, come on. Uh, it, it, it's worth a mention uh, that uh, I like the higher end stuff. You, you ended up running gun. I've, I've run all kinds of stuff, but when I have a really, really tuned in, tight, tight tolerance stuff, so I'm not talking mil spec, I'm talking something much better than mil spec. Inside the tolerances, you can even just uh, you know, rack the bolt uh, back a few times and you just feel it slide like glass. And you'll look at me when you do that with kind of more, some of the, the knife, nicer boom sticks I have and you'll be like, oh dude, I'm like, see, it's amazing. So just beautiful glass. And when it's like that, no matter how dirty you get them, they'll continue to run. The barrels will last a very, very long time and you can count on a certain amount of reliability. This does pretty darn well too. I just like my other stuff better and I get to like it better. You can't stop me. Uh, I was at a class uh, recently, I think it was in Louisiana, and I was talking about clearing catastrophic malfunctions in a gun. And so this student had kind of a budget build, and uh, I was talking about of like what happens when you can't get the bolt carrier group back. Some, you know, just 
terrible, terrible gunk happen in there. And you can't rack it. It doesn't matter if you're trying to relieve spring tension. You can't rip the magazine out. You're just sunk. And I'm talking about, oh, there's a, there's a bunch of different ways. You can turn it into a row machine and just rip it back, or you can mortar it, or you can put this down, have somebody else hold it, hopefully, so that the muzzle's in a safe place. And then you put your foot right here on the charging handle, and you like kickstart it. And so I demonstrated that, and I took his charging handle, and I think it was an Anderson lower, uh, I'm not sure what charging handle was, and it bent. And so the gun was broken. We had to take it out. And then I took the charging handle, which I'm sure many of you would be like, oh, it's just as good as, you know, XYZ gun that you love. And I, anyway, I took that charging handle, and I just bent it, and it snapped in two uh, with my hands, you know. And I am not a, you know, pinnacle of physical... <laughs> fitness by any means. I'm on a journey here. I'm getting better. But still, I mean, it just snapped in two and the whole class's jaw just dropped. Like, what? And I ended up replacing his charging. And I gave him one of mine, which was a better one. But uh, anyway, it, it just shows of like, hey man, if you're going into some tough context, you need the best, tightest tolerance parts you can that are really, 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 really tough. So if that's Palmetto State for you, fantastic, good for you. I don't really care to kick that hornet's nest again, although invariably the comments will be swarming, <laughs> swarming with stuff. I'm just saying a year later, I like this gun. I like this gun, and I uh, have put my money where my mouth was and I, is, and I've got a bunch of others. So anyway, there's the update on Palmetto State one year later. See you guys.